Hey guys, Peter from SS Bushcraft. Well, my first video went really good with the uh, the winter dress in part one, so uh, I uh, really excited. And I thank everybody for making the comments and stuff like that. So uh, here's part two. Um, before I start part two, though, I want to turn around and and kind of put a disclaimer out there for everybody. As a lot of you know, um, you know me talking about this uh, winter uh, survival series kind of thing. And, and winter dress is uh, it's totally 100% it's uh, from what I know um, you know from from what I've been trained uh, when I was in the military and uh, you know when I served in the Arctic up north and stuff like that by any means um, please don't take this as the you know the be all end all of, of knowing everything about Arctic survival or you know camping out in the winter or bushcrafting in the winter and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I'm not an EMT or anything like that. I'm just this is my personal knowledge, my personal training that I had from the military. That um, at the time I was actually able to turn around and train. You know, to to my guys and, and to my platoon, my company. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you guys that you know that have been in the military, um, you definitely you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so by any means, don't take it as being, oh, well, I know this is fact, you know, um, you know, I heard it from Peter from FS Bushcraft, and, uh, you know, he knows what he's talking about and everything else. I mean, I know what I'm talking about. I know that I'm comfortable enough uh, to, to know, have the knowledge that I have, I should say, and that, um, you know, that I could turn around and, and help somebody out, help out a friend or whatever, so that, uh, you know, we'd be able to turn around and go out and, and, and stay in the bush, stay in the winter. Um, like Cole Craven and I, prime example, like we did the other day. Um, so that's just basically it. I'm just kind of, as we all are doing on here, um, you know, sharing our knowledge, uh, what we have, you know, to try to help each other out and maybe a little experience of what we have so that we can all go out and enjoy all year round and not have to worry about, you know, oh, it's too cold and, you know, I can't go out or, or, or whatever the case may be. Or you have gone out and you find that for whatever strange reason, you just can't be warm. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, please, you know, as I say, guys, you know, I'm brand new doing this on YouTube and everything else. And um, I know I apologize a lot, but uh, it's raw. It's me. That's the way I am. Um, but definitely, if you have any questions or concerns or whatever, please, you know, leave them in the comments below. And uh, definitely, I'll turn around and get those answers, um, you know, and... Uh, respond back and, and help you out if you have any questions in that area or like I say definitely turn around and take this uh, if you're one of those kind of people most definitely turn around and take the you know the knowledge or, or whatever it is that, that you know I say in the video and I pass on and uh, you know it, you know if you got a friend or whatever or your family doctor or you know uh, an EMT or or you know somebody that, that's you know qualified in that area definitely most definitely turn around and uh, you know take what I say and ask them and uh, if I do say something that doesn't make sense or it seems wrong, definitely let me know at, at the same time. Um, I'm kind of nervous. I'll say that right now. <laughs> it's been a long, long, long time since, uh, since I've done anything like this. So I kind of wanted to kind of do it like a classroom style so that I wouldn't forget. As you can see, I made up a whole bunch of notes. I've made up a bunch of sheets. And uh, yeah, so I guess we'll get started. Um, but like I say... Um, yeah, it might be a longer video than normal, um, and I apologize for that, but I just kind of want to bash this out because the other thing I want to do is that with the dress and everything else is definitely, uh, you know, when we turn around and get a chance, and I'll, 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 I'll stop and show you there in a bit, um, when we get some snow and we can get outside. Unfortunately, we're having a warm day again today. It's like 10 degrees outside, and uh, it's raining, and there's absolutely not a drop of snow be seen outside anywhere at all so it's kind of a bummer my winter camping is getting destroyed so anyway without further ado I'll get started and one of the things I'm just going to turn around and mention and start on is that with cold dress the reason that the cold is so important and that we dress properly as we all know what's the biggest thing that can turn around and happen good old hypothermia um, now I've just quick notes that I've turned around and made up guys as we all know the human body turns around and sits at 37 degrees Celsius which is 98.6 Fahrenheit for my American friends. 
I finally turned around and did the conversion so I had them handy <laughs> before I started. So in hypothermia, when we're out in the bush or stuff like that, or if we're out somewhere and we get cold, um, as some may know, some may not, we have three different stages of hypothermia. There's actually mild hypothermia, mild hypothermia, moderate hypothermia, and severe hypothermia. And basically the way that we can tell is that if we had a thermometer, or whatever the case may be, that we can turn around and take our temperature, or take our buddy's temperature, or whatever the case may be, is that we said at mild hypothermia would anything below, or sorry, would be from 90 to 95 degrees, or for us Canadians, 32.2 to 35 Celsius. So as we know, once again, as I said, our human body sits at 37 degrees Celsius, or 98 for American friends. So it would be 90 to 95, 32.2 to 35 is mild hypothermia. Now the reason why being the human body at 37 degrees, and, and when I go to talk on that stuff guys, I'm just going to use what, you know, Canada and uh, degrees. But at 37 degrees our human body roughly sits at, at all times. The reason why we have that drop down to, to 35, so you know, we've got a degree difference, is just because of the fact of being, you know, we get cold. You know, we're walking around, we get that little shiver or whatever the case may be, you know, sure our, our, our core temperature can turn on and drop that degree. Does that mean we got hypothermia? No. It's not hypothermia. It's just, we're cold, right? It's when it starts to drop down below that 35 and you're getting down, you know, into your 32, you're definitely in the first stage of hypothermia. You're in mild hypothermia. Um, next stage would turn around and be moderate hypothermia, which would be anything between 82 to 90 degrees or 27.7 Celsius to 32 Celsius. So now you're, you know, we're, we're starting to get into that that first stage of a danger zone of you know the body starting to shut down basically you know all bloods turn on and flowing in from the extremities and stuff like that trying to go to the core it's trying to keep the core warm and, and stuff like that next stage would be severe hypothermia um, which you turn on and get into at anything at 82 degrees or below or 27 Celsius and below your uh, as it says severe hypothermia major major issues um, you know normally at that point in time people are unconscious um, stuff like that and, and there's just no you know it, it's it's quick to bring them back get their core temperature up and stuff like that now that doesn't mean you gotta rush and, and, and you know heat them up right off the bat because that's a big no no now some of the symptoms of hypothermia um, and this is basically hypothermia symptoms for adults. For children, it is a little different. There's little, you know, different things to turn on and look for. But the first uh, thing is, is definitely shivering. But, and this is a big but that I say to everybody, because everybody assumes that you're going to shiver, 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 shiver when we're cold. As, as I said, shivering, which may stop as hypothermia progresses. Shivering is actually a good sign that a person's heat regulation system is still active. So, what that means is that in mild hypothermia, you could still turn around and be shivering. You could still, very uncommon, but can turn around in uh, moderate hypothermia, still have somebody shivering. Severe hypothermia, chances are they're not shivering no more. And the reason being is that the body basically is starting to shut down. Shivering is a way, it's a healthy way of us to be conscious enough to be aware that our, our core temperature is dropping and our body is trying to turn on and heat itself up and by doing that we shiver so it, it the way I explain it is that your body is starting to you know your muscles are kind of you know doing contractions and stuff like that which making you you know shake or you know you, we get the jitters and in our teeth and stuff like that because your your body's basically trying to move it's trying to make itself move so that it, it, it can it can warm up as we all know you know if we're cold and we're standing around and it's cold but if we start walking and we start working or doing whatever then we warm up so that's kind of what that is uh, second thing is going to be slow or shallow breathing so you know as a person gets colder once again the body's trying to conserve energy it's trying to warm itself up so we're going to breathe shallower and slower uh, third thing is is definitely confusion and memory loss. Um, you know, where where, and these are things that, that you as yourself, you know, if you're experiencing hypothermia, uh, mild hypothermia, moderate hypothermia, that 
you can realize yourself is that you know you if you just stop and think um, you know that you know uh, let's use the case of being you fell on a stream uh, you know walking across a log or whatever fell on a stream and uh, you know broke through the ice and it's cold and you get out and, and you realize oh so I can't think or whatever um, it, I, I know it's hard to say but it's like kind of realize that hey I, I'm in the stage of the hypothermia I'm getting confused I can't concentrate or uh, you know <laughs> forgot you fell in the water <laughs> is a major one uh, drowsiness or exhaustion is another one. Um, being cold, once again, the body's trying to shut itself down. It's trying to warm itself up. You know, it's trying to do everything it possibly can do. So one of the things, as with a lot of illnesses or things that can turn around and happen to us, uh, you're going to get drowsy and start to go to sleep, which is a big no-no. Um, fifth thing, slurred or mumbled speech. <laughs> I have hypothermia all the time. <laughs> I slur and mumble my speech all the time. But that's another one. So, you know, if you got that buddy or whatever that has turned around and fallen into the water or severely cold, whatever the case may be, and, you know, definitely you want to keep talking to them. You know, you want to keep them awake because you don't want them to turn around and fall asleep or, you know, pass out or whatever. So, you know, trying to talk to them and everything. And you notice that their speech is slurring or they're mumbling or whatever the case may be. It's signs that their, their core is getting... Basically, their core is dropping, and they're getting colder and colder and colder. So they're moving down, down the list of you know the stages of hypothermia. Uh, loss of coordination, fumbling hands, uh, stumbling steps. Pretty explanatory. Uh, same idea. You know, they're not able. You know, people when they get to that point in hypothermia and stuff like that, um, you know, are going to have a hard time. You know, trying to get that fire going. Let's say or you know, uh, uh, trying to get the, the wet clothes off, um, or whatever the case may be, in the worst case scenario, falling in, into, into a stream, and, and, you know, trying to get it off, and, and trying to get themselves dry and, and warm and stuff. Uh, seventh, obviously, makes total sense to me, a slow and weak pulse, because, uh, you know, as they go down the list, um, the body's shutting down. Uh, it's basically, it's dying, uh, because the, the core temperature has dropped too low. Uh, eight, in a severe hypothermia, in hypothermia, a person may be unconscious without signs of breathing or pulse. Now, with that being said, there's been many, many, many cases of people in hypothermia that I know of that um, people have thought that they were dead. Um, you know, if you do have that CPR training or that EMT training or whatever the case may be, you're definitely probably going to know about hypothermia. Being especially, you know, if you're in a, a, a northern climate where hypothermia is a, a common thing or whatever the case may be, um, then you're going to know what I'm getting at. And that is just because there's no breathing or there's no pulse that you can't feel doesn't mean the person's dead. Um, there's been cases of, of people that have been out, you know, in the snow, wherever the case may be, in a winter situation and, you know, have been found by search and rescue and they thought that they were gone. Um, and they they still administer CPR, which is recommended, administered CPR, and, uh, you know, got them to the hospital, or the case may be in the hospitals, have turned around and, and gradually have brought their core temperature up, and they were fine. Um, you know, fine in the aspect of what I mean is that they were still alive. Um, they're not dead. So that's kind of the, you know, the one of the big symptoms. I mean, if, and that's, by that point in time, we know that they're hypothermic because if they've, you know, Falling into it, uh, you know, I'll say again, the stream uh, uh, or whatever broke through the ice and we can't feel a pulse or, or, you know, there's no breathing, they're definitely hypothermic. I mean, that's that's what's happened. Um, whoop, make sure, sure if you guys will just turn this a bit so I'm still in the, in the view. And then we get to what, are the uh, what is the treatment for hypothermia? Um, as we know, hypothermia is a potentially life-threatening condition that needs emergency medical attention immediately. So, some of this stuff are, which makes total sense, remove any wet clothes, hats, gloves, shoes, or socks. Basically, my opinion, and what I've been trained, and I'll use the term my opinion, like I say, because I'm not a doctor, and you know, not that EMT trained, or whatever the case may be, I've just been trained in Arctic survival, and how to, how to survive. Um, so what you want to do, as it says, remove any wet clothing, hats, gloves, shoes, or socks, is basically you want to strip everything off. Uh, makes common sense. If it's wet, take it off. Um, now with that being said, 
as some of us all talk about, and we talk about our winter dress and stuff, which we'll get to after, um, you know, wool's a great insulator. You know, if it gets wet, it still insulates the whole bit. That doesn't mean because, you know, you've got, got for, you know, if you had wool long johns on or, you know, a wool shirt or whatever, and it's wet, oh, you're going to leave it on and because, you, you know, it's going to give them a bit of insulation. No, take it off. It all has to come off because you don't want anything that's going to be next to the body that's going to keep that any kind of moisture or any kind of coldness to the body at all. Next thing is protect the person against wind, drafts, and further heat loss with warm or dry clothes and blankets. Obviously makes sense. Like I said, we don't want nothing cold or anything like that against their body. Um, next thing is move gently to a warm, dry shelter as soon as possible. Obviously, once again, want to get them out of the cold and somewhere warm. Uh, begin rewarming the person with extra clothing. Use warm blankets. Other helpful items are uh, for warming are an electric blanket. We wouldn't have that out in the bush. <laughs> uh, to the torso area and hot packs and heating pads on the torso, armpits, necks, and groin. However, these can cause burns to the skin. Use your own body heat if nothing else is available. So basically, what they're getting at is definitely if we turn on use anything that's man-made, uh, and that's the way I would put it to 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 try to warm a person up, so being that, uh, you know, like it said, uh, heating pads or, you know, the, those um, what, um, hot pads that you can buy that, you know, you squeeze or whatever and you, you put in your gloves or in your boots or whatever like that. Um, you could actually definitely use those, but next to the skin, because the person is so cold and the skin is so cold, it can actually turn on and cause a burn uh, to the skin because it heats the skin up way too fast, uh, being so cold. Um, and, and saying that using your own body heat, I actually, in my personal opinion, and, and being trained, that is the best way to turn around and do it. Because you're not going to shock the body, but you're gradually going to turn around and bring the body heat up with that core temperature up on the person. And what I mean by that is that, um, prime example, like Cole Craven and I, once again, I'll use that, that analogy and that example when we were out the other night and we were talking about it. Um, you know, and I, I, I made the comment to him, I said, you know, if, if in, like, comparing kind of what we both knew about hypothermia and stuff, um, is that if I was with a buddy, and let's say he turned around and fell into the stream or whatever, the first thing I'm going to do is get him out, definitely get those clothes off, I'm going to get him into a dry sleeping bag, I'm going to turn around and make sure that none of my clothing on the outside, so basically in my outer layer, I'm going to take off and just have my inner layer that's going to be warm or whatever that's against my body, and I'm climbing into that bag with them. And yes, guys, I'm climbing into that bag with them naked um, because the he's going to be naked and I'm going to be clothed. And the reason being is that my body heat that I'm generating with my warm clothes and everything that I have on is going to help turn around and warm him up from head to toe. So we're both going to, you know, get into the sleeping bag or whatever. Now, worst case scenario, if the sleeping bag, like I use, uh, I know uh, 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 Cole Craven and I, prime example, when we go out, um, you know, this time of the year, uh, we both turn around and have Canadian military um, sleeping bags that we use. And they're mummy bags. Almost impossible to get two people in. <laughs> but what I would do in that scenario is I would turn around and, uh, you know, strip him down get him in the bag, and then I would turn around and lay on the bag, like kind of wrap around him and wrap myself around the bag and around him to turn around and have my body heat go through the bag and, and heat him up that way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, obviously the next thing you want to do is take the, per the person's temperature. Um, if you have a thermometer available, which hopefully everybody carries in their first aid kit, I, to me, that's something you should turn on and carry in your first aid kit when, uh, you know, if you're going to turn on and do Arctic, or I shouldn't say Arctic, sorry, <laughs> I'm just so used to saying Arctic because that's where I was, um, if you're going to go out winter camping, um, just because it, it's nice to have that so that you, you know, double check. Um, the other thing, last thing would be offer warm liquids, but obviously we want to avoid alcohol and caffeine. Uh, which speed up heat loss. Don't try to give fluids to an unconscious person. Well, obviously, because they're going to choke on it. But, what that means, <laughs> coffee, caffeine, no, we can't give everybody coffee. And the reason being is that we hopefully all know alcohol and caffeine actually turn around and help 
the body speed up heat loss um, because you know it thins out the blood as we all know and everything else or hopefully we all know um, I guess I shouldn't say that because some of us might not know and are watching this video to learn um, so yeah so alcohol and caffeine will as I say caffeine <laughs> will turn around and thin out our blood and turn around and cause us to lose more heat. So that's kind of it, kind of fast. I know I kind of went over it fast, but definitely, like I said, guys, if anybody has any questions or anything, feel free. Um, you can ask, not a problem at all. Um, so now, 